Let's get read. Hello, my name is Katie and I am here to let you know about my COVID vaccine situation. How I went about the vaccine and how the vaccine went and I'll also do like updates on like how I'm feeling and everything and I'll let you know what I'm feeling as side effects and stuff just so that you are aware of like what is to come for the vaccine. Now because I work um, as a frontline worker, I am a support worker um, for a community of people with special needs. So we do come under that sort of factor, but like not like hospitals or like care homes sort of thing. So I got an email asking to basically apply for a slot. And I was told I would get a slot within seven days and I had to like, try and attend that slot. Um, so I had a slot, um, it was for today, which is Saturday, 11.40. I was like, broom, I'm off work anyway. I signed off for glandular fever, um, which I'm hoping that I'm on the tail end of. And I did check with my doctor if I could have this vaccine with glandular fever. Um, I said I feel like I'm on the tail end of it. I've had it for like three to four weeks now. So the doctor okayed it for me. And so I went and as soon as I arrived I went to Southampton not at the hospital it's more a clinic place um as soon as I arrived there there was a queue of cars so I was like brilliant I went to the right place also they had a nice big sign saying covid vaccine center I was like brilliant <laughs> I'm at the right place so I was asked if I had like my staff ID and my consent form and then I went into the car park I was, you know, parked up by some attendants and then I was told which pod to go, there was A and there was B. So I was told to go to B, so I went towards B. Um, when I entered the building, um, I used some alcohol gel for my hands and then I went forwards and I showed them my consent form and my staff ID and everything and then I got taken through to the next room. There were two people in front of me, they sort of asked for your name and you go through to these booths and then in these booths they sort of like ask you these questions um, just sort of like about you, you know, you know, like are you pregnant, you know, do you have any allergies to any of the ingredients and they list the whole of the ingredients so they just ask you all these sort of questions, do you have any history of these sort of things as well. Um, so you go through that and then you are taken to another room where the vaccination is. So I'm there and they're looking for my email and it's not on the form or anything. So whilst one person is asking me for my email, the other person is vaccinating me. And as soon as I gave my email, I was vaccinated. So it was literally that quick. Then I was taken to a room literally opposite, which was the waiting room. And you had to sit in there, wait for 15 minutes. Um, the attendants were really brilliant. They gave you a sticker with your time on so that you know when you've got to leave. So my sticker is here and it says 12.22 and it had a cute little smiley face on it as well. So that was really, really good. So um, yeah, definitely one upping this clinic. They, they were really, really good actually. Um, they had a brilliant process of doing it. It was done so quickly and like, it just felt like even though there was, it seemed like there was a lot of people there it just it didn't at the same time so yeah so you waited for your time I was just sort of sitting on my phone and um as soon as time's up I just went okay my time's up and they were like okay left right left in order to get out of the building then you return to your car um or however you got <laughs> and then you travel home that is actually it um when I was driving I felt a slight ache in my arm um, I'm right handed so I had it done in my left arm and there isn't really any sign of any Thing being done to my arm at all so so far so good i'm not feeling any symptoms and um, the current time is 1 59 p.m it's literally about to be 2 p.m and i have had lunch as well so um i came back and i rewarded myself with a mcdonald's so i implore you to do the same um <laughs> i <laughs> i'm obviously like promoting obesity here but um yeah i mean after you've had a vaccine you just really want to have something to fill you up so I had a little McDonald's um which I haven't had in ages to be honest um so yeah I feel good after that I shared my chicken McNuggets with the cats I mean I had to you know they were just begging but yeah <laughs> so yeah um I will update you further throughout the day 
um, and especially at any signs of any symptoms but so far so good I'm feeling all right I'll just see how I feel tonight and tomorrow morning and throughout the day and yeah I'll keep you guys updated hey everyone it's quarter past four and I just wanted to quickly update you on any symptoms like I said um, so my arm has just started aching um, I can feel it even now um, definitely like just where the injection was I can feel an ache going on in my arm but so far that's all I'm feeling just an ache in the arm which you know it's it's a common side effect same as if when you get a um, flu jab you can get an ache in the arm I have heard people getting an, an achy arm my nan got an achy arm and she got it so I'm not worried about an achy arm about you know three hours after the vaccination is when my achy arm has started hello it's 5 52 p.m and the ache is a lot worse very very achy i'm going to take some painkillers in a second but i've got the weirdest sensation that i can feel like something is running cold down my arm it's very strange um i can actually it's like my wrist is hurting um, I've got this like faded sort of thumping pain sort of like going like zing zing like around my wrist area but I literally it's very strange my arm it literally feels like something cold is running from the top of my arm through my veins and down to my fingertips it's the strangest way to describe something but it's <laughs> very bizarre it's just in one arm it's crazy um no idea what's going on in my body but oh so this is like the second side effect that i have noticed hello it is 9 p.m and new and latest symptom <laughs> is a fast racing heart um and also the area where my vaccine was it feels quite warm um like if I don't touch it at all it feels like my left shoulder where I had the vaccine is a little bit on fire <laughs> um but yeah I'm stood up right now and my heart is racing quite a bit it's literally going boom 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 I was sat on the sofa for about 10 minutes and I had exactly the same it just started about 9 p.m um just went boom 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 it's now 10 past nine all I've done is just stand up just to get my camera and my sofa is literally just there just stood up and I'm just stood here and my heart's just racing a bit so obviously my body at this stage is fighting the vaccine I suppose um, is probably what you can say it's um, the infections probably taking place um, so yeah it is making me feel because obviously with your heart going at double time probably even triple time um it kind of you know makes you tired so i am feeling quite sleepy um and it's only like 10 past nine <laughs> so um i'm going to pretty much like go to bed it's actually um quite a cold night tonight but i'm feeling quite warm so i'm gonna like go lie down in the bedroom and i'm gonna see how i am a bit later on um i'll let you know if i gain any other symptoms um but yeah hopefully i'll next be seeing you in the morning where i let you know how i am the morning after um but yeah so far today achy arm um the weird sensation down my arm of the coldness um and the fiery feeling of the arm like my shoulder is on fire and the fast heartbeat that is the latest addition and those are my symptoms so far from the Pfizer vaccine hello so it's Sunday now um the day after and I just wanted to like update you on like how I was feeling like the day after so I've still got an ache in my arm although it's not too bad I don't really have the tingles so much in my arm I can't think of like me feeling it and I don't have this like faded pounding 
pain throbbing in my wrist anymore. Um, when I was speaking to my colleague, he said he had the tingling in his arm. that has been like pins and needles. And I was like, yes, I think that's like probably an easiest way to kind of like explain it. As if like something was like going down your arm. To me, it did feel like something cold was like running down my arm. It was very, very strange. Um, but that's kind of like stopped this morning. So I've still got the ache in the arm. I've still got quite a fast heartbeat, though it's not like as bad. I feel like I'm not tired yet. Um, it did make me really tired last night. It was like 9 p.m. and I wasn't feeling like awake and stuff. I was feeling like oh, really, really drained. Like ooh. So um, yeah, um, didn't feel great this morning. My new symptoms this morning, though, in replace of what's gone, is I have gained a headache which um, I'm told somebody else said that they suffered with a really bad headache and my friend who also got the vaccine, although she didn't get the Pfizer, she got the other one she said her symptoms are nausea and headache and I have gained that today so I'm feeling a bit nauseous um, I'm literally, I don't know, I just feel a bit like I've got no appetite whatsoever um, and yeah, definitely a headache, it's just really like here um, I'm not worried about temperature or anything, I don't feel like I'm hot or anything, I just feel like my head is warm I suppose. Um, I mean it's just side effects of my body that's battling whatever this vaccine is. So yeah, that's my symptoms. A little bit of an achy arm, headache and a bit of nausea, that's all I've got this morning but I will update you if anything changes or if I've gained any new symptoms. It is Monday which is two days after I had the vaccine and I just wanted to update you on my current symptoms this morning I do feel some nausea and lack of appetite I would like to say because of the nausea um, I still have a fast heart rate that's going on and um, I have <laughs> had to contact the doctor because um, I'm off work I had glandular fever um, so I really just sort of like checking for advice really of like um you know with with work and stuff um because if a fast heart rate i don't want to like overwork my heart just in case so really it's just a bit of advice whether they say to have like uh a few days off or a week off or whatever um just until the symptom goes away and but yeah this is like the latest symptom that i have and yeah i'm feeling very very tired I again didn't have a great sleep I um, kept waking up every now and then so I've had a wash <laughs> um, but yeah um, I'm able to do like little tasks like I went to go put the laundry on and come back although my heart is a bit mm, so I don't know whether it's just the first thing in the morning and last thing at night thing where I'm resting um, that's when my heart I've noticed is very sort of beating fast like I'm laying in bed and I can feel it um, but this morning I went to the toilet and back and I was a bit out of breath so um, just because of my heart so I'm just keeping an eye on that and asking the doctor for advice on that but I have been told somebody else had a fast heartbeat as well and they said it lasted a few days so yeah um, we shall see from that it's quarter to 1pm, I just wanted to update you on some symptoms that have kind of like come back and stuff. Um, so it started off that I um, began to feel a pang of nausea and like I've got like no appetite whatsoever again. Um, so that's come by. <coughs> you might be able to tell that my I sound a bit blocked up. Um, yeah, that's just started happening as well, like a bit bunged up again, like bunny nose. I'm sneezing and then my throat kind of like started um, getting quite phlegmy like a phlegmy cough I'm coughing every now and then um, and then I had this headache I still got this headache now it's like here I could feel that my head was warm so I took my temperature because I hadn't taken that today but my temperature's come out fine um, it's just <laughs> symptoms that have just come back so now I feel even worse than I did this morning um, obviously I've still got the ticky heart <sighs> no pain in my chest though it's just very phlegmy and yeah I just feel bunged up and I just don't feel well at all so um, I will relay this to the doctor later when the doctor does give me a call um, but yeah I just wanted to let you know some symptoms have come back 
um, which could also have been triggered by my partner um, because he has some symptoms as well he's not feeling very well so between us we're a bit of an unwell pair <laughs> but yeah um, I'll update you if any symptoms disappear or any sim other symptoms like come and yeah fingers crossed it just goes down for now hey today is Thursday I'm just going to quickly update you on my symptoms um, so last night I had a temperature of 38.7 and I was hot on fire I was delirious I could barely walk um, I was shivery throughout the night I barely slept this morning I slept on and off. I feel this horrible sensation around my chest, um, but I'm feeling a bit better. I did have a shivery moment earlier, but I had a cup of tea and some food. For some reason it, it like helped better. I found that the one meal that I can stomach at the moment is popcorn. You'll see some bags just there. Um, other food, like my stomach just churns even when I try to eat it. But I'm feeling a bit better today. I just feel really runny really nose bunged up sneezy i am coughing up just sort of not even like phlegm it's just sort of saliva basically um so yeah sneezy coffee basically fluish symptoms today with a horrible sensation over the heart with a very very slight pain um it is in the distance but it, i just it feels heavy that's all it is. So yeah, I just wanted to update you on my symptoms the past couple of days. But hopefully last night was the peak and I'm just going down for now. Alright, sorry that I have not vlogged in a couple of days. As you can tell, I um, I don't sound great at all. Um, yesterday I didn't feel great. I just felt very sick and yeah, just not very good. Um, so I didn't vlog at all, not for my channel, not for anything. Uh, so this morning we got a um, phone call from um, Aaron's work just saying that we'd uh, both tested positive for COVID, which, if I'm not completely honest, I kind of knew because the moment that I uh, lost my um, appetite and a bit of like taste and horrible cough I kind of knew something wasn't right so so I will reiterate Aaron had symptoms Sunday I had symptoms from the vaccine but the symptoms that Aaron got I developed on the Monday uh, so <laughs> I'm probably at the worst I could be hopefully hopefully it just goes down but earlier I am um, I had a moment where I um yeah, I struggled to breathe it was very painful the uh, the point the sharp point of um where the pain was was sort of on my left side but I can mostly feel the sharp pain on my back um Sorry, uh, you can't see me by the way, like it's best that you don't really anyway. But the lights are out. I have not checked my temperature today. I think I'm going to in a second because I feel my body feels really, really hot. But yeah, um, my lower half and my hands just feel cold. I have had shivers for a few hours now. And <coughs> nothing is helping today i've also vomited after coughing on three occasions uh, that was like early one in the day <sighs> yes i am out of breath and i feel like shit and i've got another world's worst headache i feel sick I feel sick but I feel hungry at the same time because I've not eaten all day and I've got a pack of Derrida Lunchables just waiting on the coffee table in the lounge but I can't stop shipping I really just want to eat something and hope that it warms me up and makes me feel better I just don't know what to do anymore 
but it's like I don't even know what time it is it's probably coming up like 9 p.m. <laughs> uh, yeah 10 to 9 <laughs> um, so yeah um, I just wanted to quickly update you because I asked if anybody wanted to know how I go through and um, yeah instead of it being a uh, this is how the vaccine will go for someone with a weak immune system this will be a my covid pro progress of where i had the vaccine and then i had symptoms and then i contracted covid and then my symptoms just got worse worse and worse i shouldn't really be vlogging now but just i really want to help other people um I should have a test on its way. Uh, I don't know if it's been posted already or not, but I was going to check for me a bit later because um, I need to redo my test because my my name was entered incorrectly um, and because my test was done uh, with Aaron's work, the, <coughs> the email and the text <coughs> that is registered under it isn't my own personal details so uh, I've already got the uh, the email confirming that I've got it but I need to redo the test so I should hopefully have had the test posted tonight and dropped off <clears throat> and then like when Aaron gets it out tonight I can do the test when my nan um, is on her way to the town and I'm gonna put it in a carrier bag and clean it and wash my hands and stuff and then she, I put it in the plastic box that I put the post in so that my nan can just take it and go away I don't want my nan to get I don't want anybody to get this I would never ever wish this upon anybody apart from maybe like animal abusers or like murderers <coughs> but right now this isn't it's not good um i need to like kind of force myself to get up and check my temperature um and then just try and get something to eat and to dress up warm the uh <laughs> luna was really really nice earlier like she laid at the end of the bed on my side um to keep the end of the bed warm it was really sweet because whenever I, if my feet touch the end of the bed it's so cold but yeah, if I constant shivers, I feel like I have slept at one point because I just woke up and I was like, uh. <sighs> yeah, just I'm not feeling great at all. I just I just want it to go away. <sighs> I just don't feel good. And when I had the pain in my chest earlier, that was just you know I was gasping for breath, and I was like trying to calm down because I don't want to go to hospital, you know. Because I feel like if I go to hospital, I will die. Uh, and I don't want to affect other people. I've got to try and keep this to myself as best as I can and just let it go. Oh, Aaron has been brilliant, though. He um, He's in bed with me because he's got COVID, too. And um, when I was feeling cold, Aaron was just, like, hugging me like a prawn. <laughs> <laughs> just so that I could stay warm as best I can. I shivered so much. <sighs> it's died down a little bit, but <clears throat> I'm still getting some shivers. But my body does feel quite warm now, so I'll just get myself up to have some fluids, some food, and I'll see how I feel after that. And then do the test in the morning. And my nan will post it for me because me and Aaron are not allowed to post it. Uh, so yeah, it's just a waiting game at the moment, but I hope to God that it goes away. I just really like people need to realise that this is real. It happens, and the easiest way to describe it is like a mixture of flu and pneumonia. Like you've got flu and pneumonia in your chest, which is where the breathing comes into it. So yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go now, um, and I will hopefully be able to update you either later or tomorrow on any further symptoms. 
but a thank you to anybody who is watching and who is interested um i just wants to know exactly what it's like to have covid and i can assure you nobody deserves to have this nobody like i say apart from people who cause harm to others and intentional do it like animal cruelty and murderers that i would wish upon because that would be a nice little revenge i sound a bit uh, morbid but sorry that's just how i feel all right i will go um hope you're all doing okay um today is wednesday um and yeah my birthday is next thursday so i really really kind of want this to go by then <laughs> I wish you all the best. Hello, today is the 26th of February and I just suddenly realised when I was editing videos that I haven't vlogged for you guys in a while about my COVID experience. So originally it started off as a COVID vaccine video for the, to help those who are going to get a COVID vaccine. And ironically, I ended up catching COVID, not from the vaccine, I just unfortunately caught it. Um, there was an outbreak at my partner's workplace um, and around the actual uh, towns that I live in there's been like a few little outbreaks as well so I caught it from that I did catch COVID pretty bad you would have seen like all of my experiences of it this is a sort of like aftermath of COVID of like how I'm feeling now because unfortunately because because I, I hit COVID pretty bad so therefore i'm now in the process of long covid is what they call which is basically where symptoms are still extended and going through my body my body is slowly getting back to normal like really slowly um some people they have a cough they don't feel very well they lost their taste and whatever a couple of days later they kind of like get back to normal and then a couple of days after that it's like it never happened and they can go on about their lives but for me it's been very difficult um the thing that i have had a problem with is one fatigue and two um this very weird dizzy feeling that i've got it literally the the easiest way to describe it is like i'm drunk it's like even when i'm sat down now it's like I'm going like, woo, it's really weird, it's very strange, I'm aware of what I'm doing, but at the same time, like 10 seconds later after I do it, I'm like, wait, did I actually do that, wait, am I actually doing this, it's very strange, um, so the past couple of days, I've been trying to get myself doing some activities, and just seeing how I sort of like go and react to it, my appetite has come back, it came back probably about a week ago, I want to say, but my taste has definitely changed. That's the really interesting thing. And my doctor sent me a link for NHS saying about like how to help with my long COVID symptoms. And one of them mentions about taste and smell. And it literally is kind of like describing what I'm going through. That my taste probably isn't going to be the same again, if not for a while. And that definitely is true. Like honestly, my taste is just so off. I cannot stick fizzy drinks yet before COVID. Fizzy drinks was one of the things that I would always religiously drink. Um, so at the moment, food-wise, what I have been eating um, is I've been having melons and fruits. And um, especially like the little fruit pots you get where you have the fruit in the fruit water. Um, little do do them. And I've been having one of those a day. Um, my partner Aaron went and got some melons for me today. I'll just had a honeydew melon today I just cut it in half I just spoon out the seeds and then I just been eating like half of the melon and I normally have that as like a breakfast thing melon is really good because it one is a fruit it contains all your vitamins and minerals that you need and also it is like you know it's got juice in it and water in it so it's great for hydration as well so it's one good thing that I've been eating so I definitely recommend that if you've had covid and if you can stomach a melon then melon is really good um especially if you can buy those melon pieces um like a melon medley sort of like box sainsbury's do do them but i totally recommend them and like i said the little little pots of fruit with the juice in they have really really helped as well 
um so i've been able to like stomach some things i had to like force myself to eat some things as well like i've still got my birthday cake that's been going on my nan made like last week and i've just been having like a slice a day i can taste it when i first had my birthday i could not taste anything um which really really sucked um so now i can stomach a birthday cake slice but it's all about like forcing myself to eat and stuff. I, I am still forcing myself really. Because um, at the time I'm like oh, I'm hungry but I never know what I want to eat. So it's really just the case of like putting something in like an oven or like in a microwave. And just like taking that first bite or the first spoon or whatever. So this evening I've had some soup. I've been stomaching creamy tomato soup. So that's been helping me for like some meals as well. And um, earlier today I had some chicken goujons with some McCain unicorns. They're kind of like the McCain, McCain like smiley faces that you get, um, but they're like unicorns. So I had those and I had some baked beans with them and I was able to stomach that. Um, drinking wise, what I have been able to drink is oddly enough Nesquik milkshake. For some reason I taste it, I drink it, I've been drinking it quite religiously. So I've had my Nesquik drinks and also another thing is fruit juice so my nan got me these cartons of juice um they are quite ideal but you can like just buy the big drink cartons and just drink that as well but these are ideal because they kind of like restrict me from drinking so much juice which is pretty good um squash I do have but like I've not been drinking it as much I've kind of gone off squash a bit as well which is just it's strange like what's been going on like the tasting is just very very bizarre it's still something that i'm getting used to it is very weird very very weird um i've got a pain in my rib today i have been coughing today um i've definitely bruised my rib so when i cough or if i lean on the particular area it just hurts around my left side so my back of my rib and also my front of my rib so that really sort of like hurts so when it comes to like sleeping at night it's quite awkward to try and get into a position that is comfortable so i'm dealing with that at the moment other than that it's the hazy feeling um of like walking from a to b if i was walking from here to the bedroom i am a bit unsteady on my feet um i think it is linked to fatigue and energy and also oxygen as well because obviously when i had covid it was pretty bad took a lot out of my lung and my lung is kind of like slowly healing itself as well and getting back to normal so don't really know like how long it is going to take before i can actually be able to be steady on my feet properly i'm still trying to push my lungs in order to do housework around the place like laundry or like washing up or something i do get exhausted afterwards i have found that i'm napping quite a lot i am sleeping quite a lot so when i do eventually feel better like that i'm able to drive i will obviously have to have a phase to return to work because of like what's been going on i don't want to like end up working a seven hour shift and find that i can't drive home because i am knackered i have to like be really really careful with seeing what i can do um so <laughs> covid isn't great i don't recommend it it's horrible i had like probably one of the worst hits of it i had the vaccine just before it um that i caught it so whether the vaccine kind of helped for like the last part of the covid i'm not entirely sure but it was horrible i had like literally all symptoms that you could possibly imagine you know that not just the main three of like taste smell temperature and the cough i had like everything else sickness diarrhea dizziness and oh, i was just honestly the most awful experience i've ever ever had far worse than when i had pneumonia pretty bad when i had pneumonia in the whole left side of my lung and this after recovery is worse when i had pneumonia as well when i had pneumonia i was just exhausted i was really tired i slept a lot but this is just weird. It's just this strange drunk feeling. The fact that my whole taste and my smell has just changed. And it's just, it's weird. It's so, so weird. Like, it's like nothing that I could ever imagine. Um, 
I'm very, very sort of like happy in the sense of I'm, I'm thinking like, thank God Boris Johnson has just made this decision that like end of March, we should be able to have like two households be able to sit in a garden together. And honestly, when I saw this roadmap and of this announcement, that was the most one that I was excited about because knowing that I can travel to my nan's, sit in her garden, even if it's distant, just being within the same proximity as my nan is more than anything. It's more than the shops opening. It's more than anything. It Honestly, it brings tears to my eyes when I was talking to my nan about it today. It literally just like... it Honestly, it made me get really teary. Like, it's the most happiest that... Um, the most hopeful thing and it sounds strange but I'm really really like looking forward to that like more than getting this new home at the moment just being able to see my nan and my nan was like yeah we can sit in the garden we can have a cup of tea a slice of cake we can have a real good chat for a few hours and honest and it made me so teary because I've not seen my nan in months in person we've been protecting each other I said to my nan, I was like, nan, I've had the first vaccine and I've had COVID pretty badly. I think I'm pretty much bulletproof right now with this, with this virus. <laughs> so I was just like, <laughs> I, don't, I think if I ever caught it, it would literally be a snivel. <laughs> so yeah, um, obviously I'll be waiting for when I get my second vaccine. I probably would have to wait another couple of months because I've had the COVID um, and obviously the NHS are aware that I have COVID, so um, they probably got it on their system. So I probably would have to wait a little bit longer than I normally would before having a second vaccine. But in a way, I can't wait because I just want this all to be over. I want to be able to be fully vaccinated properly and, you know, proper immune against this virus so I can live my life and you know just get back to normal again what has helped me through this covid experience definitely is calling my nan um to me she is like my support bubble she is just the best for advice she's the best for help she's helped me so much during my covid experience it's it's been so handy to have somebody be able to shop for you to be able to drop the shopping off for you and to not have to worry about any payment or anything um, I'm so lucky to have my nan in my life. She is like a mother to me and I would be nothing without her. So she definitely, definitely has helped me through this whole COVID experience and even through this recovery experience. I've just been calling her near enough every day just for a chat, whether it's half an hour, whether it's 10 minutes, whether it's 20, whether it's two hours. We've just had a real good natter, like just about how we're feeling um, the stuff going on in the world, what my nan's been up to, and hopeful things like seeing each other again. Like, it definitely, definitely has helped. Um, and I will eternally be so grateful to my nan um, just for everything. Like, she is one of the best people in the world. It brings tears to my eyes <laughs> just talking about it because my love for this woman is just, oh, it's just, it's so pure. It's so, so pure. And I would love to have a mother-daughter relationship just like that if I ever have kids and if I ever have a daughter I would love to have that sort of relationship between myself and my child um I give anything to have that sort of relationship um so yeah um this is the latest of my covid experience and just what I've been feeling and what I've been going through and what I'm currently going through now so really at the moment it's just a waiting phase it definitely is a mental health attacker um, my mental health definitely has been very low in this whole COVID experience but I'm lucky that I've had my partner Aaron that I live with and also the contact with my nan as well and everybody else has just been so so lovely that even though I had COVID around my birthday everybody has just been so brilliant in support and everything and I can't thank uh, anybody enough really like it's just been so nice everybody on booktube everybody who gifted me a book for my birthday sort of thing like everyone has just been absolutely 
lovely and it's so nice that people stick together during these tough times so really today i just wanted to update you because i've not been updating you in like ages i've just not been feeling up to it um but yeah uh <laughs> one day i just woke up and i just i stopped being sick i stopped coughing um so much and i just started being a bit dizzy and out of breath and very very tired and this is just what I've been coping with the past few days. So I'm looking forward to the day where I will wake up in the morning and this whole dizzy thing will be gone. Like, I'm looking forward to that day. It's a slow experience. Um, obviously, I've got to accept that. And, you know, everybody around me will have to as well. But I am just trying to push myself to get my body as strong as it was before as well as recovering at the same time so it's a difficult experience because you've got to have that bit of balance but you know it's taking its time but i will keep you guys updated anyway um on a daily basis of like what my symptoms are how i'm feeling and so on and so forth until the day that i fully recover so realistically this is now going to be a video not just of covid vaccine and of experience covid in a pretty bad way and the COVID recovery, but also it is about the aftermath of it and experiencing long COVID. So I want to help people to like how they feel about with the vaccine, how they feel about getting COVID pretty badly and with having long COVID. So, you know, it's an experience and this will be something that I will look back on in a few years time and be like, Christ almighty, did I really go through all of that? um i survived covid you know i was saying to my nan today i want a certificate and a badge from boris johnson saying i survived covid like <laughs> because really that's an achievement you know i never went to hospital i nearly did but i survived you know i survived i survived covid and i'm just recovering from it at the moment and it is so tough it's not the greatest thing to go through so yeah, I'm going to head off now for today. I will hopefully speak to you guys very soon if any symptoms change um, or if I'm feeling any better, um, just to keep you guys fully updated with my COVID experience. Hello, it's the 11th of March. I have not updated for this in a while. That's just because my symptoms have mostly been the same. And I wanted to kind of like make sure, but the past few days, definitely for this week, I have lost that dizzy feeling although I am still heavily fatigued yesterday for example I was really really tired I don't know if it was a mixture of the weather because it was really bad weather it was raining and it was really dark and you know I'd done like a little bit of reading but I just felt really really tired yesterday today I do feel a little bit tired I mean I did have broken sleep last night so that could be why as well the weather's like really nice today though so now and then I'm sort of like I'm okay when I wake up and stuff like but um yeah other times I'm just like yeah I don't know how I feel so yeah very very strange but here we are and I'm near enough back to normal if it wasn't for the fatigue I would be pretty good so luckily next week i'm gonna return on a phased return to work so um i gave him the option um after speaking to the doctor um of like it's either three shifts of like four hours or two shifts of five but like separate from each other so it gives me the chance to rest in between and that way i can determine if i can like add a few like another shift or like a few more hours and stuff obviously I want to get back to normal again as quickly as possible but only with the pace of my body so yeah this will pretty much be ending the vlog on my COVID journey because I'm near enough back to normal apart from fatigue obviously I don't know how long the fatigue will take because that's just something the doctor said it can last you know a month it can last three it can last six it's just one of those things you just don't know how long it will take until you feel yourself getting back to normal obviously i do feel a lot better in doing activities and stuff i'm not as out of breath as i was but i'm just very tired like i literally take naps and i just relax a lot more and 
you know so that's just all it is but i hope you guys have enjoyed watching all the vlogs of like you know how i dealt with covid and um you know that i got it pretty bad and what to expect if you do get it pretty bad and yeah for you to probably see that it's not a great thing to go through and to be really careful and to make sure you are doing what we're meant to be doing like by wearing a mask when you're around other people and always wash your hands if you blow your nose wash your hands you know if you cough in your hand wash your hands you know just be safe because you know you don't want to be that person that will give it to somebody else who will be worse than I was and end up in hospital and you know you would never be able to forgive yourself and you know there's far too much negativity in this world to be <laughs> dealing with stuff like that so yeah just take care of yourselves please be safe um I hope you really enjoyed this sort of video um and yeah if you have please give it a thumbs up all of my social media links will be linked down below in the description if you'd like to be my friend and follow me elsewhere it's all down there below and yeah thank you so so much for watching it honestly means the world keep smiling keep reading be happy stay safe my name is katie and i'll see all of you wonderful awesome people in my next video bye <laughs>